hope you enjoyed all the videos that we just published from Mercedes headquarters, cutting open the S-Class seat, seeing the car that drives and parks itself, and then also the Mercedes-Benz Vault Tour. It was an insane week and we just got back yesterday. But while I was gone, there was something interesting that kind of ties into our trip that I wanted to talk about. Self-driving cars and the future of self-driving cars and what I've learned over the last little bit through owning a Tesla and using Autopilot 2.0 and then also going down to CES and getting the chance with Mercedes-Benz to take part in their intelligent world drive and to see what they are doing and look on the inside of the system of what Mercedes is doing to prepare for fully autonomous driving in the future. To a lot of people, it causes some hesitation when you see a car in Arizona that's an uber self-driving car, fully autonomous car that's driving down the road and it hit somebody and killed somebody. It's, it's the first death that we have, basically a robot car killing a person. And that's a scary thing because it doesn't matter which auto company you talk about, they all have divisions where they are looking at autonomous driving and they're preparing for it. So if you haven't seen the video, I'm not gonna publish it on here, but there is a video of the car when it hit the person that was pushing their bike across the street. And the thing that really surprised me is this car is driving at full speed. It looked like it was maybe 60 miles an hour. And this car came and the person was walking. It was nighttime and they came into the shot. The car didn't respond at all. It just full on hit the person and the person went flying off. Super scary to see that. And the thing that makes you wonder, it's like, okay, you've got a car driving on the road, but shouldn't it react when somebody walks across the street? And my first answer is yes, it fully should. There's a thing on the top called LiDAR. And when I was talking to Leslie about this, she asked me, What is LiDAR? It's a good question. There's a company called Velodyne that's I think in Detroit area that makes these pucks and these things on the top that can spin around. The Uber car had a LiDAR 360 degree, 120 meter range LiDAR thing on the top that's sensing everything. What's supposed to happen is that car is supposed to see the person walking across the street. It talks to the actual software on the car and the car makes adjustments based off of that no adjustments were made. Velodyne, the company that makes LiDAR says, our LiDAR doesn't make the decision to put the brakes on. That makes sense. It is up to the car. So I had the unique opportunity with Zach from Jerry Rig Everything, Ben from Teslanomics, and Jared from Ellie and Jared to go down to Las Vegas and ride in a Mercedes S-Class that was specially retrofitted with TV screens, monitors, with a server in the back of the car. This is not for making the car drive. This is just to store, log the data as I said. Well, so-called brain of a car is pretty much just this device. How much of this in the top part is usually there in your regular yeah. standard autopilot? That's the camera. Okay. And these are the surveillance cameras. Why we have them, you'll see when we come back. The next step that we have to do is of course, get that technology on the road for everyday use. Nobody wants to buy a car where on one piece of road you can drive autonomously and all, if you turn left instead of right, it doesn't work anymore. It's green on the left, so I can change lanes in a further car. I could do that automatically. I will do it automatically on highways above 80 kilometers an hour. You can also see steering angle has a very high impact. This is 150 meters. So if I just turn my wheel very slightly, that blue line goes like a whip. The way we recognize pedestrians is you have a head section, shoulder, body, legs, and no matter if it's a small child or tall person, the general shape and the general way they move is rather similar. That was this Here he is. guy. That's the guy right there. There's the guy right there. Yep. There he is right there, walking across the street. If you're able to, to recognize those and, and uh, we are probably in a good place where we can um, get some strategy to deal with uh, wildlife on the road. Okay, if you look right here, you see all of these little lines that are moving. Take a look out here. These are the cars that are all turning right there. Can you kind of see that? It's looking at multiple data sets for every single car, and it's not just the ones that are in your line right here, but this traffic is all coming right now toward us. You yep. look down here and you can see every little car that's coming. And so this is part of level two autonomous driving, which is in, as you've seen in our Tesla Model X, but it's also in the Mercedes S-Class that's currently available. So what I think is interesting is just like President Donald Trump has a red button Whoa. in his car that's probably a nuclear warhead that goes. This one's not quite as scary, but this car does have a red button in it. Say for example, you're driving and there is a deer that goes and walks across the road in front of you. Push the button, it records the past 30 seconds of all of the data that this screen is capturing. And then you can talk for 15 seconds to the microphone. Once they get somewhere where there is the internet, they can send all of that data to the different engineers and then they take that information and they can go and, and make 
possible future changes to a car and say, this is what it looks like when this happens. So right now the car is parked right here. They are looking at the data points that shows me in the system to show exactly what I look like. Zach is capturing that in the car right now. That's the cool thing about this car. It's like whether you're walking, I'm gonna walk across and they can see exactly where I'm going right now. They can see my body moving. So it's cool. And this is the stuff that's in the level two autonomous driving right now. And this is a new data set that they maybe they'll have to capture this. What happens when a vlogger is vlogging in the middle of the road? Autonomous pilot needs to know that. It's impressive to see what Mercedes is doing to get to the forefront of autonomous driving. 95% of autopilot is super, not easy, but it's easy to do. It's that last 5%. I guess that's similar with a lot of things in life. Is that what Pareto's principle, the 80-20 rule? Now something important to know is that Tesla does not use LiDAR. And Elon Musk has said repeatedly that he doesn't believe that you need to use LiDAR in order to have a fully autonomous car. Now, I like this quote. Scott Miller, the director of autonomous vehicle integration at General Motors, GM, one of the biggest in the world, he says that Elon is full of crap. He says, the level of technology and knowing what it takes to do the mission, to say that you can be full level five with just cameras and radars is not physically possible. So what Tesla has, they have it on their website. They have cameras all over the car. And then they even have a radar that's in the windshield that goes out. Their radar goes a max distance of 160 meters. Now that LiDAR with the car that crashed only goes 120 meters. Either way, it should have been enough to be able to see this person and cause a reaction. But that's the way the approach that Tesla is taking. They think LiDAR is way too expensive and they think that they can achieve autonomous driving in different situations without having that LiDAR expensive chip on there. Maybe there's different options in the way to do this. So while some people think that Tesla not having LiDAR will hold them back, it's estimated that Tesla will have 11 billion miles of driving of data recorded to their system by 2020 just from their current cars that are out there in the fleet. Now the thing that I think that they're missing that Mercedes has a handle on is actually having a person in there report things. When you're just getting data, you don't know exactly what it was that came out on the road or different things that may be tricky. You need a person to actually report it and to talk about it. And that's something that Mercedes is putting in the time. So I definitely see the future of cars and driving being fully autonomous cars. I think we're gonna get there in my lifetime. In the next five years, possibly 10 years, for sure 15 years. I'm, I'm putting a bet on it right now. You can come back to this video 15 years. Fully autonomous cars will be out there. <laughs> but we need companies and cars to spend the time and the capital to put a human person in there tracking certain things and teaching the system how to operate properly so that we don't have tragedies like this when a person will come in front of the car and get hit. So let me know your thoughts. What do you think about autonomous driving? What do you think about LiDAR or cameras or radar? What do you think about Mercedes is doing, GM? Uber. Are you excited about these cars? Are you scared about the future of this technology? How much testing should these companies do before they are able to actually launch out there? And after seeing the events of this week, the tragic events of somebody losing their life, when I drive my autopilot, I'm going to be extra focused to make sure because the technology is not perfect. Level two, autonomous driving is not quite there. Level three, still not quite there. Level four and five, once we get to that stage, then you can be okay to watch a movie on your phone or watch a YouTube video. So anyway, let me know your thoughts and I hope that you enjoyed all of these car videos over the last week. We're not gonna have any car videos for a little while, so um, sorry about that if you like the car videos or if you're ready to get back to regular vlogs and travel stuff and doing goofy things, that's coming too.